This car doesn't have anyone in the driver's seat, but it isn't driving itself. Hi, how are you? Hi, can I please get a double-double and a vanilla milkshake? Instead, in an office a few blocks away, a remote driver is at the wheel, making the order. Hi, how are you? Just a double-double with onion, right? Yes, thank you. Uh, there you are. Have a good day. Thank you. Ah, he said thank you. That is so cool. <laughs> Ben Shookman is a product engineer for Phantom Auto, a company that has designed a system to allow a remote operator to assume control of an autonomous vehicle if it gets stuck. They demoed the system for us at a drive through as an example of something self-driving cars would struggle to do without human assistance. Other scenarios that they refer to as edge cases include bad weather, gas stations, and construction work. There are many things that happen on the road that humans take for granted in terms of being able to comprehend what's happening. So in situations like that, instead of having the passengers stranded in the vehicle, a remote operator can take control of the vehicle and drive it through those edge case scenarios. Stations with five screens, curved in an almost 180 degree arc, with pedals and a steering wheel all connected to fast gaming PCs, Phantom's control center could be mistaken for a video game, but... It doesn't feel like a video game at all. It feels like, uh, piloting a vehicle down a street just like you would with a normal car. And I think it's a lot like driving a car for the first time when you were 16. At first, it's a little bit scary, but over time and with enough practice, and in our case, our training procedures, you really get to know how to drive a vehicle remotely very easily. While you might not see a system like Phantoms in your next minivan, the company is looking to leverage their service to robot taxis and logistics companies hoping to get more autonomous vehicles on the road faster by complying with upcoming regulations that require a human safety net. We have one customer that we're working with right now that has a truck that has no cockpit for a human and no manual controls. And we will be fully remotely controlling that truck 100% of the time. But the service isn't without its challenges. The company takes the threat of hacking seriously and is contracting specialists to ensure their systems remain secure. Also, Phantom is using existing cellular networks to transfer information between the car and remote driver. While they've used a process to ensure they get the strongest signal, relying on a cell network can be problematic, especially in certain parts of the country. Autonomous cars from companies like Google's Waymo are scheduled to hit the road this year but there's no industry standard on how to help AVs if they get stuck. For example, Waymo has teams of humans remotely monitoring the cars and assist the AI when it encounters a problem, but does not remotely control them. Phantom CEO Shai Magzimov feels like keeping a human in the loop is an important difference. I think that uh, for us as humans and passengers in these vehicles, we would always want to have uh, a person to talk to and a person to help when needed. And I think that um, it's going to take at least a few decades until autonomous vehicles can just be on their own. And so if you're talking about the next 10 years, I can tell you for sure this is going to be needed.